In previous tutorial, we understood about Site Administrator and also got a quick interface with ALM and understanding of creating a user account, working with projects, creating a domain, and also understanding how exactly a user can be associated with a particular project. And finally, we logged into ALM. Now today, we'll be getting into the details of different modules of ALM, starting with the very first module today is Management Module, where you can actually manage your releases and life cycle of the product where you can define a milestone as well as different cycles as a part of your management module. So let's understand a little more about the same. Hello team and uh, we have discussed in the previous tutorial about working with uh, creating a user account, working on a project, and finally logging in into the ALM. So we have seen those basic interaction with respect to ALM and the very first interaction with our interface of the ALM. Once you log in, you have a lot of modules which you can start thinking about and probably we will be learning all of them in our upcoming tutorials. So in this tutorial, as per the agenda, we'll be working on the releases, which is the most common thing where you actually start. And if you remember, the last time when you logged in, the by default, the first input is release where you log in for the first time. So generally, you will find a folder which is already present by default in the folders everywhere in each module. For example, if I go to libraries, I find a library here. Requirements, I do find a requirement folder here. So we call them as root folders. The root folders which are present by default and it is created as a part of the database and the important part about root folder is it can neither be deleted nor modified that means you cannot rename it or you cannot delete it for example if you right click on this the delete option is disabled so that proves that a root folder cannot be deleted or cannot be modified that means you cannot rename it or do any changes to that so root folder will be present by default to prepare your further tree on that. So the very first thing what you should do is to create your project folder. So now you know you have a project with you and uh, generally in release folder you define a particular release where the release means that a particular version of the application. It might be the very first version of an application or it could be the second part of it like 2.0. So what you generally have to define here is a schedule that what is your release all about and how long and what exact activities you will be doing as a part of it. So under this project folder, you create a new release, which is the second option here and click on that in order to define a release name. For example, release 2.0, assuming that this was already available as the first version and we are trying to create a second version of that. Whatever you see in the red here are the important and mandatory fields to create a release. So until unless you fill the red fields, it will not allow you to submit that. The one which are grayed, it means that you don't have to enter any value. The system details will be captured to uh, uh, follow the details with respect to the date and time when this detail was last modified. So assume that we are working on a project starting today, that is September 9, and going to uh, till 30th of the month. So just taking some examples here to make you understand that how exactly releases can be created but in real time it will have more details option. So description in this version or you just detail you just define the description of the release which you are creating right now. So in this release or you can say also the version new features like modifying a ticket and transferring a ticket will be added. So it's just that you define the detail of this so that anybody who is looking at the release can understand very well that what you are trying to do in this particular release. So every stakeholder of your organization will have access to ALM and when they come to your details, they can have a look and understand more. So it's very really recommended that you provide all necessary details when creating any entity under ALM. Say OK. Now release is created and you can find all the details right next to it. 
so modified date is automatically captured and a release identification number unique id will be also captured here release scope will further determine the uh, kpis if you want you can include them that we will see later master plan is about the entire plan that we will do as we proceed further scorecard will show you the outputs of the kpis and status will show you the progress on that how much days are over how much more days are remaining and further you link a lot of other modules here which can show you the estimated outcomes now once you are done creating the release by selecting the release you can create a milestone what is a milestone milestone is just like a phase where you say that one part of the activity is now completed for example if I have to say that my milestone is unit testing when I can call my unit testing is complete so I say unit testing is going to start on 10th of the September and going to last till 15th of the September and say OK. Now, yes, you can include the description as and when required, but not just there. So here, that's one milestone. Remember team, a cycle cannot be added under the milestone. You can only define a cycle and then come to the unit testing or a milestone. So assume that my cycles are here. What is a cycle? It's just a phase within a particular stage. For example, unit testing is my milestone, which is a particular stage in testing and has different phases under that. For example, the first one is um, probably sanity and smoke. Sanity and smoke testing, which is to initialize. And this will happen from the 10th of the start date and probably last till 11th of that just two days for that and say okay so now you would see a cycle here now if you remember unit testing i gave the dates as 10 as start date and 15 as end date so that means i have five days to complete three cycles so again select the release and create another cycle for example this is my unit testing or i can say rather component testing and give a start date and end date to that just like earlier so 12th you start and 14th you finish and say okay now another cycle which you can create here is to complete the unit testing is component integration testing so it is just a part of the same cycle or milestone which you will be completing during this phase so say you start on 13th and you end up on 15th of September and say OK. Now this is how you work with releases and you capture the creations of the folder, release, milestone and cycles. Again, the next milestone will be integration testing and might have data flow testing or the interface testing or even talk about creating of uh, system integration testing, incremental integration, non-incremental integration. So all those cycles can be further created into this. At any point of time, if you want to reschedule, you can see that all the fields are gray on the right. Gray means cannot be modified even if you double click on that. But to reschedule or if you want to change the date, you have this option here called as reschedule to change the dates. If you want to have a duplicate cycle, you want to repeat anything. So it just follows the entire architecture of your basics of testing, which allows you to have all the information which you can actually think about. Similarly, each cycle will have their own progress update compared to the release one. So release will also have everything here. So now you can see the master plan here showing the complete set of dates and the progress. So this plan will be automatically getting created. So if you see unit testing is throughout as a milestone and under that there are three activities which will be taking place as sanity, component testing and component integration testing. So that's about the release. And additionally, an additional component which we have here libraries is to include libraries from the previous projects. So if you have any resources, any sort of information which you think you have from the previous projects or uh, newly when you are trying to create a project for the first time, all the resources would lie under this particular section. So you can again follow the same architecture for libraries. But for this we need resources and we do not have anything specific right now. So I'm not busy creating that, but you can always create that. The most important option of library is this option, which is compare. So library feature comes with a compare option, 
which allows you to compare the existing work products with the new work products in order to see what changes have taken place. Now that also allows you to have a quick comparison between the different versions of the work products and allow you to define how many new test cases will be required in order to uh, cover the existing or the new piece of code. So yes, we have everything as a part of it. So today we understood how exactly management can help us to manage our releases right with starting start date and end date and a lot of progress options and the milestones to monitor the progress of the cycle as well as the release. So that is an end-to-end -end management of the entire life cycle of a project within ALM project. I hope that was really interesting to all of you and we will be looking forward to have more interesting tutorials on ALM. This the series is all about understanding ALM from end to end, so stay tuned for that. Till then, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.